So we left off with our creation of our new team form using Vue.js and quite a lot of other bells and whistles just to make things look pretty, pretty cool when we add and edit users to this form. You can create a team and it updates to the right in real time. And then a user can be added with the name and email intact. And this all goes to a post method that gets sent over JSON to our database and gets saved as a result. So it's it's a really handy, really cool way to be interactive with a Rails setup, which would otherwise just be more or less posting data to a database somewhere, uh, which is perfectly fine. You just have to wait for the pages to load and you can't do some of this cool maybe scrolling interactivity that happens here like this. So uh, as the page gets bigger, I can scroll down and it sticks. It's just adding a class dynamically. Not to say you can't just do that with regular JavaScript, but it's one of those things. So next up, I want to work on getting our team show page to look better because right now we just have the team name and that's it. So our team show page looks like this so far and we definitely want to get rid of this stuff because it doesn't look good. Um, but I will go ahead and just add this part by part and we'll more or less just feed data back in and make it styled nicely. So follow along if you want. I'm going to speed it up just a touch. All right, so with the show page coded up, I can go ahead and talk through what's going on here. We have basically each team user is going through and I'm calling them a member. For each one, I'm getting their Gravatar URL through their uh, email URL. <laughs> and then I'm outputting their name as the alt tag on the Gravatar image. This is a gem I installed originally, and from it we can just basically output an image of a user based on their Gravatar image. So it's handy for sure, as opposed to having a whole user upload your own profile process. You know, Below that we have each member's name, their email, and a helper I created, or I will create, it's called verbose date. Helpers can be an application-wide function that lets you just tie into certain functionality or you can do it per model, depending on what you want. I like to put like stuff that's scalable, like date related stuff where you could use it more than one place uh, in the application helpers. So this one's pretty simple. I think I used this in a previous series. So it's just called verbose date underscore date. And we pass in a date. In this case, I'm passing in a created at time. So I'm taking the date that we pass in, making it a string, and then passing in specific time keys. So B, uh, D, and capital Y in this case. To output that, you can just do the Rails way and call it this way, and then pass in that date. In this case, this is when the member was created. So the same is true in a sidebar, I have our projects for the associated team. I'm getting the team name and just saying, hey, calling it this team's projects. If projects actually exist, then go ahead and I'll put those. I'm just doing it in an unordered list with a link to each project with its name. Uh, otherwise, if no projects exist, I'll you know show a link to create one. And then of course, if a user signed in, we can display these links. I didn't really, I should probably check for if a user signed in, but for this app, you pretty much have to be signed in to do anything. So I don't need to do it within the same view. Let's go and check that out and see how it looks. Looks like I might have some errors. 
team not user yeah users needs to be plural everywhere okay great so this side it looks obviously messed up something's up with that let me double check all right guys i had some issues with my code i think i just made a typo somewhere to be honest but it was rendering a, an array of all the users on the team for some reason, and I don't really understand why. But anyway, this is what the team show page will look like once it's all said and done. Here we've got our gravatars, we've got our dates outputting the people on the team and their email being displayed. As I said, when we were getting this thing kicked off, you can't quite edit users on a team. Uh, because of the way devise works currently there could be a workaround if you really wanted to manage users in the sense of devise um, we could create a controller that allows you to at least delete users but you couldn't change anything else i'm doing that on another app i'm working on currently and i wanted to have at least access to delete users that shouldn't be existing on the app and it's more of a admin type situation. So everything's namespace for only an admin account to see those things. Uh, I could get into that in different, maybe a different series or series of videos later on. But essentially we can see our team at this point. We can edit it if we click edit down here. And if you want to cancel, you can do that. You can add a new project from this page too. It'll go to this dirty looking project page, which we still need to hook in. but. Other than that, we're sh you know shaping up. So up next, I'm I think Teams is done. So I think we're gonna add projects next, which should be hopefully a little easier than the last form building exercise with Vue.js and all that stuff. So this one's gonna be more Rails uh, focused. So our model is gonna have it accepts nested tri attributes for team. And that's just a saying, hey, I want to allow a project to be assigned to a team since we've added the team ID to the model uh, originally. And you can see that in our schema, which is represented right here. So project has both a user and a team ID. And I believe we set up our controller already. That's gonna have all the functionality we need to kind of get the associations in place when we create a new t project as well as a new team. So let's get going. Basically gonna work in the views to get this rolling. So I'm gonna go to our projects show page. Maybe we'll do new first, actually. All right, this one's pretty basic. I just wanted to say new project, but I want our section to appear correctly and kind of in a padded way. So container. I'm working on this late, so if I sound tired, I apologize. Kind of wanting to get this done in one felt swoop. Okay, so I just did a basic break tag here to make things a little nicer for this button. Could just give it a class of button. Great. So within our form, we can work next just to make sure this is looking good. In this one, I want to check first if a person belongs to a team because I don't want them to create a project without having a team because to do so you need to assign a project to a team. So to do that, I'm going to do an if statement in our rails and it's going to be if the current user is not, let's see, let me type this out and I'll explain it. Current user .team ID is blank. But if it's not blank, display this stuff. Else, do something else. End. Cool. And I'm going to just honestly get rid of these and just retype them. They're kind of a burden. So we've got this in nested if else statement going on. So if a user doesn't already have a team ID and it needs to say blink, not black, we need to display the form. So field control, and then we can do our input. Uh, it would be f dot input name, input HTML. This is just 
kind of extending simple form class of input and we're giving a wrapper false let label HTML will be class label. We'll end that one. I'm gonna just copy that one because it's pain to retype. And this one's gonna be description. This will be, it'll have a text area class. Okay, great. And then below that, we finally want one more field. This one will be a little bit unique. We can give it a label. Oops, I do want that. And this one's gonna have the team association. And I'm gonna make it kind of look fancy here. Select. So we'll do a generic input field here. And this is still part of simple form, it's just a trimmed out version of it. And then I'm, I'm making a select dropdown. So I want to have a collection of all the teams available to the specific user who's logged in. And I want it to prompt to say select team. So if they're logged in, it's, this should rally up all the teams they're available or on, and they can go ahead and append a project to a team. This also took some work to get working right, but it was way easier than the Teams form that I was working on. In the class. FA, FA users. Okay, so that's that field. It's kind of a doozy. And then we have finally our button. And I uh, forgot the F dot input field there. Don't forget that. Do submit. And then a class button, and then is linked to give it that blue color we're after. Okay, so now we need to do the elves, and this is more or less just a message to say, hey, go create a team first. So I do article dot message dot is warning. Message body. I just did some strong tags and it looks as though you are not part of a team yet. And a paragraph, you can create a team or get invited by another user to join. So essentially once you have an account, um, you can only be a part of one team, but you can create multiple 
projects inside that team. So that's just kind of how it's going to work. It's almost kind of like a dedicated app for your company. Um, there's no reason for you to be a part of different teams, but rather just have different projects within a team. I don't know. It's kind of not quite scalable, but I just wanted to build something kind of realistic. Okay. So I think this should be good. Uh, if we don't have project this at this point, we should get uh, mistype team ID needs to be here. We should get a field like this and I don't have a team yet. So there's nothing to display there or I actually belong to a team. So that's interesting that nothing's displaying. I think what I did is projects controller new teams is what it should be. And that should display my team there. There it is. Did I really call it team? I did. That's funny. I'm going to change the name. Web crunch. Save. Cool. So now I have, I can create a new project. It's going to associate to that team. Say I signed in out as someone else. Uh, I need to check that. So on our home controller, I need to check if the current user is signed in. I knew this would bite me. I was, I saw it earlier. I was, wasn't sure why I needed it, but now I do know why. Okay. We should be set. Great. Okay. So if I signed up as a new user, just for grins, Jane Doe at I'll just say Jane. At doe.com. <laughs> I don't know. Sign up. Should get an email. Jane, confirm your account. Okay. Cool. So if I create a new team now, I'm given this warning message that says, hey, you're not part of a team yet. You should create one. So I could go create one or just get invited by someone. So um, the problem is now that I already have an account and you can't invite someone who already has an account. So that's how it's pretty close ended. If there's a workaround, I'm sure there is. Um, it's probably a little more in depth to do. That's just the problem is I didn't have enough time to do it. So small little thing there, but at least this gives you the foundation to at least think about how that would work. I'm gonna sign out of that user and we should have our team or project set up now. So if I go to web crunch, obviously creating a new one is just going to be pretty generic. I could just say test project, uh, some data, I don't know. And I'll select my team. I'll create, it'll redirect here. I'll, I'll want it to kind of, yeah, I actually will want it to redirect here but now it will show on this project here. Nice thing if, is that if I signed in as this other account, John Smith over here, which I did already verify. So J Smitty, I can see that project. So I can see that it was created by the other guy, even though my name is John. So that's kind of cool. So that wraps up the idea around creating projects. Uh, there's still some love for editing projects that I need to wrap up. Um, so like editing, this form looks pretty ferocious. In the next video, fix that up and then start working on just that activity timeline real quick. So more to come next.